Hey guys, today it's Reynold. Today we're going to be doing a 300 invocation commentary with a lot worse gear than I've ever gotten with. Uh, here's going to be the setup we're going to be running. This is more of a setup that's not exactly aimed for efficiency, but someone who's looking to kind of get a general feel for the raid. And then maybe when they're about 10, 20 KC in, I highly recommend kicking it up uh, with some slight differences until they get Fang and Bofa. So. As you see here, we're going to be running Walkfort and Softcore. Softcore is really good for someone learning. They can feel free to die at all any of the rooms. And because of that, we're also not running any supply vacation here. Normally, I run no help needed, some help or something like that. Less help is trash, by the way. It's much better to run no help and have bandages off than it is to have less help and anything on. Some help is a good basis behind that as well. So either go some help or no help or no help plus bandages. So that being, fed, that being said, we are running Walk the Path at 300, which is actually very inefficient. Is it terribly bad? No, it could be worse. It's about like 10, probably about 10% slower of a raid. What is the reward for it? Of course, 50 vacation, of course, but it allows you to kind of reach that 300 breakpoint without turning Insanity on. Why specifically Insanity off? Honestly, Insanity off is terrible, but specifically if you are running like a DCB and for some reason you're aiming specifically for an early fang, this is a good way to do it. But if you have Bofa, absolutely turn on Insanity and turn off Walk the Path. That is a much more efficient setup. It gets you to Warden quick. Warden is the majority of your points, so that is where you want to get your free points. You don't really want to spend more time in Baba, Kefri, especially if you don't have a fang. So that being said, we're going to do it on anyway to show you that it's possible although less efficient to complete this raid within 40 minutes with bad gear and the supplies given to us. That being said, everything, you know, making this raid harder for myself only helps me prove a point that it's not really about gear in this raid to complete 300. It's more about, you know, having the necessary skills and management with your inventory. So speaking of inventory management, a lot of you guys might not be familiar with corresponding switches. And if you see here, I have made two separate two by twos, one for mage, one for range. You can see they're actually ordered the exact same way. In those 2x2 two two areas, I have my chest plate on the top left for each of them, cape right side, amulet bottom left, and then the weapon on the bottom right of the 2x2. Two two. And then the rest of them is where the rest of the gear goes. We're going to be cutting some corners for the gear a lot too. Feel free to drop this to Dragon Defender and Fire Cape. I've cut corners on the Nate Tazant, but it's a regular one. No torture, using a Fury, Fighter Torso, and when I'm using Melee Legs. Trends drop down to Dragon Boots. We're not even going to bring a Light Bear. Screw it. We don't need it. I think we'll get a 2 down anyway, but if we don't, I don't really care. Uh, if we have the 3 down, it's fine. You can complete even faster if you have a Light Bear. Arrows Gloves will be our hybrid gloves as well. But, you know, the more switches you can add to the corresponding switch setup would be great. Ideally, if you did have, like, melee legs and ranged gloves, which I don't expect everyone to have, but let's say I have Ferocious plus Bando's Legs. Then, e Essentially, I could just do something like this, where I would wear both of them, and then I have a six wave for both of them. But we'll feel free to hybrid these two for now. Downgrade the saturated potion if you want to. You really do want to BGS for these kind of setups, ideally, especially if you are running a pretty bad range setup, and you absolutely want thralls when your DPS is bad. Like, you want thralls all the time in Toa. Ancients is terrible. If you're still taking Ancients in 2023, stop. Ancients is only good in the monkey room, and it doesn't even help you because ideally you shouldn't be taking damage there. And if you're managing your thralls correctly and prioritizing the right things, thralls are only going to take up like 10 seconds at most, 20 seconds, let's say. In this kind of invocation level, it's not something for you to worry about. Ancients will never be good in this raid until maybe Dr Desert Treasure 2 comes out and Ancients is like overpowered maybe, I don't know. But right now it's terrible, so don't take it, please. Now, let's go ahead and pot up. Let's stop rambling. Go the rest of the raid. I'm going to play a little bit more basic, so forgive me if this is not the most efficient raid. I just want you guys to know what's a good way to clear it, sort of, while being easy. So let's bring like six brews and like five restores. I'm just going to wing it. I don't really exactly know a good ratio, but this seems to be fine. You can also add in, if you happen to have a breaching partisan from like a lucky entry mode, bring that in. Sun spec, I wouldn't, I highly don't recommend it for an invocation to slow. I don't want any of you guys to crutch on it too early yet. It's a good thing to have, maybe as a backup weapon, but don't rely on it. You'd rather be using your blow pie specs and DPS specs uh, more optimally. Now, let's do four-way switches. Keep it simple. 
if you want to add in extra switches like this, just remember to unswitch them, sort of. So when I kill this guy, I'm going to click the barrel's gloves. And then, you know, unswitch him. I thought I picked up the hammer. That sucks. And then you can just fix your four ways again. Shamans go first. And then I like to kill the Thrall and then kill these two Meliers. Or you can kill the Thrall after these two Meliers. Both are also good options. You saw I unswitched them kind of there and then like unswitched that three way. And then did my four way. So that's another example right there. Always kind of path toward your puzzle completions. Now here it doesn't really matter which one you go for. Ideally the mages and to the venom, but I'm kind of going for just maximum blowpipe downtime. That's why here I go for the venom and not the shaman, because the venom is slightly closer, plus the shaman is farther away. Once I'm done with blowpiping, I'll do the rest of my switches. Again here, hit the major first just because the shaman's so far. Now this is a two cab wave, which means it's gonna need two baboons to progress the next wave, which is why I have time to kill that thrall there. Now we are approaching the next wave. Shaman first. Into the baboon. The shaman now sees me, I'll go in that one first. Slowly path toward the pillar. Take care of these thralls. Before I go on to the next wave. And then I'm gonna mage these two, unswitch them, and get ready to go into my melee gear for the one ranger. Now this is the easiest way to clear it. You can kill this ranger and then do the rest of the wave. But I highly recommend if the shaman is like that, right next to you like that, just go for him first. Much more efficient. I kind of play it like by ear and just do it whichever is easier. Again, two cap waves, so we'll go for these guys first. Was that a three cap wave actually? Well, anyway, shaman first. Now we'll go start on the Venoms. You see I'm kind of pathing toward the next Venom too, in case I kill this one quickly. Now definitely try to have at least one Restore Drank by the end of this. Kind of keeps it convenient for your blowpipe later on, but if not, it's fine. You can drink a little bit later. Go for BGS. If you hit hold for blowpipe, with this kind of setup, I don't really have a good DPS weapon. I don't have Void Waker, Claws, or ZCB, so I'm just going to hold for blowpipe specs for extra HP. But if I do miss, I am going to continue to keep going for them. Nice hit. And we're going to keep a spot open right below our blowpipe so that our four or five way switches are convenient coming out of boulders. You see, I always click around Baba. I never click through him. Clicking through him is usually a bad idea, just because, you know, under being underneath him will get you Shadow Slammed. And I highly recommend never being on the exact center tiles. Both, it is hard to dodge the shadow, plus it's a lot harder to tell when Baba is doing his Shadow Slam. The Shadow Slam, a lot of the time, will have him just stutter and face directly where the middle of where you are. So it makes it easy when you're not directly in front of him. Like that. You saw he just froze up like that. I'm ready. You see, I don't really go for the baboons either. Just kind of ignore them. If they open up a sarcophagus, it is what it is. Just completely ignore that portion of the map. Lost some ticks there, but it's okay. Now, one thing you can do, by the way, is when your combat, divine combat's about to run out, you can brew right after hit, and then drink a new divine combat. And it kind of gets you... With a four take weapon, you'll do you will have a little bit of downtime with that uh one hit, but it's not that bad. If you just want to kind of get it going for free. He kind of freezes up. Now I have honor fave on, so I'm gonna keep my prayer relatively high. I'll take about 70, and I'll be distancing myself as far away as possible. That's why I'm sitting here and not just a little bit closer like here. There's always a chance. Seen so obviously don't stand right next to, uh, right in the middle. If you kind of want 
we kind of want to know the danger zone if you watch this carpet here when i click back all right whatever we'll just try to skip again that mistake is kind of good to make though not in purposes of efficiency but to show you that i can go down a little bit on supplies and make mistakes and still be fine let's go ahead and pot up <laughs> throwing boulders is a decent time to do it and see i always have my mouse ready so anyway, as I was speaking before I got ran over by a boulder, you see how the carpet has different colors. We have like a dark red, we have a light red here. The light red is just the danger zone for the gap. Simple as that. Danger zone. I'm not even gonna bother to... So clicking through is not a good idea. I was going to say, I'm not really bothered to use the Abyssal Dagger spec. It's one of the worst specs in the game. Not really worth going for. Okay, so we went down a little bit on Bruce for no reason at all, but that's fine. That's why I also highly recommend bringing a 4-dose combat uh, when you're kind of new. That way you have a little bit more error room and might not enter carefully. You're botted. Unbotted. If you haven't, go on Runelight's plugin hub, just like this, on the top right. Type in Tombs. And go ahead and download the Tombs of Masked plugin by Lemon there. And it does help out a lot. Uh, here are my settings if you want them for the puzzle. It's basically cheat code, uh, but clearly Jagged still does not care about it. And that for me, that means they're okay with it. Uh, it's been like almost a whole year since release and they clearly don't care. So these are my settings, overlay, tile. I like to keep, I feel like this is the setting that keeps it clean the most. So, but feel free to experiment as much as you want. Now, being said, remember, the goal of these raids isn't for you to spam these kind of raids with this setup. It's more so you can just get like a quick light bear fang and get out and then upgrade to 400s quickly. So remember that as well. You want to learn insanity, of course, before pushing further than this. This is like the last point you should be at 300 with. And ideally, hopefully, you already know the raid well enough to have insanity off. But, you know, it does kind of help when you're using like dragon crossbows, I will admit. So with Kefri, I highly recommend swarming the first set when you're new and not swarming the second set. That way you can not have to really deal with DPS timings and stuff like that. If you don't really have a good spec weapon, just use BGS. Try to hit a 20. Um, but if you do have a good one, you do want to save it for either Kefri itself or the Overlords. So like Claws, Void Waker, ZCB, they're all good specs to use on either Kefri or the Overlords itself. Now hopefully we hit a 20. If we don't, it's not the biggest deal. Yep, Mills is miss. Now, a lot of people like to swarm by the Miller, trap by the Miller. I don't recommend trapping the actual Miller, but I do recommend set creating a separation point like this between the Miller and the Major for set two when you don't have Overlords on. Now, obviously, you don't want to trap. You don't want to trap yourself. So we'll just keep dunging in this line over and over. Hopefully it's not enough. Trap it, but it's fine. It does. The reason you don't want to trap it also is because Trident's pretty bad DPS on it. Shadow is okay, so it's not as bad. But you do want to ideally stab the melee if possible. That being said, this raid is... We're not going to be swarming at all. Uh, not going to be swarming the second set at all. Sorry, sorry. We're definitely swarming if we have Overlords off. There, I should have a blowpipe on my long range, so I don't get trolled like that just for a hit, or I could just wait and be more patient. So, the swarms also go in a clockwise manner like this, but sometimes they can skip just like that. You saw they skip the one in the direct north. You want to minimize downtime, hit the ones closest. If they're about like one tile away, don't even bother, but ideally, you have to order a little bit better than there, so then you can keep. Carefree, you know, about two swarms lower than that, which I think about 80, 90 HP. We'll go ahead and continue to stab this guy. Definitely protect range. Get ready to swarm again. Not swarm. Dung again when you see these little flies. We'll just go ahead and stab. We'll go ahead and relocate ourselves to the other side. Don't mind these tile markers, they're for overlords. You actually don't need to pray ranged against the agiles, but feel free to do so. 
Let's just do it. Especially if you, if you have better melee gear than this. These agiles barely hit. I'll send it to the eggs. That's pretty melee. And let's not swarm this face to keep it simple for learners. Ideally, if you have something like a Fang spec or Void Waker, you can proc this guy re very reliably and then go ahead and swarm. But we'll just run around and stab him. Pray melee. This guy doesn't hit hard through prayer anyway, or at all. Go ahead and continue stabbing. Now Kevra will wake up. Let's pray range, and let's lazy flick Pidey. Now, I don't find lazy flick a lot of effort. Just because you're kind of forced to move around anyway, so it's just like a little extra click next to the prayer window. Kind of is like a two birds and one stone set. Now it's a lot easier to get DPS checks uh, when you have a bad stab weapon, so I'm gonna go on the side with more space. You don't need to worry about being on any specific side, especially in Overlord's on, since there's nothing else hitting you. If you did end up trapping the Mallard, don't forget to kill that first, because it does heal. Does heal Kefri. Kefri also resets the defense when it gets to its next phase. So when it gets to that phase, I'm gonna BGS again. May not be too efficient in solo, but especially in teams with higher HP pool, consider it. And they're opted to get hit, so I don't have to lose that tick there. But that's a little bit more advanced. We'll definitely feel the DPS increase if we hit a BGS like this. Again, if you have a blue partisan, use DPS increase over Abyssal or Asta. Okay. And we did expect these raids to be slow, so don't worry about it. Now, we have all these supplies. Definitely go Salt. Don't even look at Chaos. Just go straight for power. You need that Adrenaline. And you can choose either to go Aka or Zabak here, but... For consistency's sake, I highly recommend you learn Akka 3rd. It's also the most efficient one anyway. Because it's a lot more it's more common you're gonna brew it Akka than you are gonna brew it Zabak. And in case you do decide to do runs where you're preserving assault, then being able to brew at Akka is a lot more desirable than being brewed down for Akka. Let's just say that. Being brewed down for Akka is really bad. They impact your DPS a lot more since you're also doing three styles. And it's a lot easier to brew it. Aka. More common for you to brew it Aka than Zabaka. Sorry. So I did that what I did just right there was something called the mining pillar skip. Uh easiest way to put it, you want to stand. Well, I messed up because I got I really didn't want to take that damage. I should have just taken it. Uh, efficiency wise it's better to take the damage than it is just to do that, but whatever. For these rooms, they always have a preset solve. Uh, do your best to memorize the solves as best you can. I kind of memorize the mirror one, two, three. And if you want, you can mark barriers like this, setups like this. You can mark the barriers, kind of have like a preset idea of how to solve it. You'll just have to memorize them as you go along. To make the reflective sides face a, a certain way, you can kind of face that way as you place it. So, if you do want to do the mining skip, if you saw there, there was a timer on the statue. You want to be one tick away, which is like this entire area, but not right adjacent to it. And click it as it turns green, as this circle here turns green. That's it. Simple as that. It gets you an extra hit. Might be a good difference in case you have low mining level. I believe Mulgoat Kirby also has a good video on it, so feel free to watch that one. It's a pretty simple mechanic. Now, we don't have uh, need no help on, so we will have extra salt anyway, so that won't matter. Now, Algrid does make a pretty good difference for this room. We're just gonna face tank him. Don't worry about Butterfly. Butterfly is bait unless you have Shadow. We're just gonna face tank it. We'll brew, brew as needed. That being said, keep an eye. 
Let's just switch these guys around. Watches prayers, of course. Whenever you hear that noise, then no, no, that's a different noise outside. Try to squeeze in your blowpipe hits if you can. But if you can't, don't worry about it. Whenever you hear that noise, that's how you know Akka switch styles. There it is, that noise. He always switches in the same order, so your prayers are always going to go left side, and your offensive prayers will switch accordingly to the combat style, combat triangle. You can see their attack before I even focus on my offensive prayer. Go for the ticks, and then go for the off offensive prayers after. If you have extra spec, I highly recommend using them on blowpipe specs. Blowpipe specs are very efficient to use. Sometimes you'll get a shitty heal like that, but it's fine. Again, watch your salt timer here. When it's going to hit the 30 mark or 45, just 15 second intervals, right before then, click your brew. That way you're kind of going to get a no time brew, a zero time brew. You're going to heal and then your stats will be instantly restored. So I'm back in four faction. Decent tip for... Oh, you keep switching. Decent tip for these guys. It will never go diagonally. You'll never have like lightning into... Oh, let me talk. You'll never have like lightning into fire. You'll never have, you know, like uh, darkness into light. Now mage for sure is our worst style. Let's watch our timer over here. Being very rude, and you can see I'm like rearranging my switches as needed. Another zero time brew. And yes, this room is gonna be a bit rough. Uh, but maintain good TPS, and the room will go a lot smoother. That's why knowing that 15 second. Versus not knowing it, it's a huge difference. Look at the dead, it's a good offhand you can use with the setup. And we'll fix our switches again. Low pipe is the best weapon you can use. Let's take advantage of those specs. Nice heal. Now, when you're marked, you can move one or you can move even tiles, but moving three, five, you know, any even, any odd after it is going to sting. It's going to be kind of difficult to deal with. A little circle there. Always rearrange your other two switches as needed. Just focus. The four ways almost always safe. Remember. Let's watch that second timer, especially as we approach the last phase. Want to be high HP before we enter the last phase. sloppy on my switches there. And he's being kind of rude, but it is what it is. <laughs> and then once you finish up, of course, get your stab weapon ready. And invocations like this, below 400, definitely pretty mage. It does reduce the damage of this phase. Every three hits, get ready to move backwards and then right click click Akka. Sometimes you always get slammed by orbs like that. Again, try to grow up it the best you can. You can see I'm getting my restore ready. I'm just gonna chug as much as I need. 
Don't worry about saving brews. You'll have more than enough for Warden. The point of these brews is to make it so you can survive until Warden. So, that's been solved. Remember, that's what me barely trying to dodge them. If you do eat more, then brew more. It's fine. Nothing to worry about. Just brew. If you make it to the end of the four rooms, you'll be fine. So, you can feel free to use these tile markers. They're just called Zabok tile markers. I'll go ahead and export them if you want to put a paste bin in the description below. Uh, basically, what you want to do is run to the water container. Click this row. Not this specific line right here, but just this, like, anywhere in these, these areas. And just run along the asset as needed. If you use these tile markers correctly, what happens is you will not register. If you didn't know, no, running doesn't register the middle tile because you kind of skip across. And these are where the spikes are located, so you can't take damage from the spikes, which leaves you only with taking damage from the acid. So let's go ahead and grab the water container, run to this tile or the one adjacent to it. Sorry, this one. And then let's just dodge the acid midway, use the container on the waterfall, turn around. Now, it just so happens to be that you're already on this row as well, running back. Let's go ahead and use the water container in the palm. Saves a tick to use rather than to just left click them. Same exact concept over here. Running back happens to also be on this nice row of tiles, which completely dodges the spikes. As you see, I'm just running right through them. And that'll get you a perfect warden. Not warden, this is epic. So definitely launch some ZCBs. ECBs? BGSs. Sorry, I just came off from my long shift. And then go ahead and start crossbowing Zabok to death. You want to hit at least a 20, then you can just use the rest on blowpipe specs or save them as needed. Do takeoffs if you want. This boot takeoffs is fine. If you don't have a buckler, you could also use um, your Book of the Dead as an offhand. That's a prayer bonus. We're going to be here for a while. Don't forget to throw. Now watch under his paws. If you saw there, there was actually a little red animation there that indicates he's about to do a blood barrage. You don't really need to focus on it, especially if you're new to the raid. But having that timer in your head and watching it carefully gives you kind of indication. You see here? Oh, there it is. You saw it. It's Prey Mage. There you go, blocked. Now, if you have upset stomach on, be careful pushing forward. If I push forward here, it's going to go like this, land behind the rock, and blow up there. That's not what I want. So this one I'm going to blow up manually. But if you don't have upset stomach on, even easier. In terms of preset solve waves, for the first set of boulders, you generally want to be in this area. Solves can be on the other side, but generally this area has the most highest percentage of solves. Using blowpipe also helps because it has a lower travel time. Whereas, you know, DCB... Might take a while. For the waves, just, you know, play some wipeout. Not really much of an explanation for this. The only thing I would say is have a good mastery of that tile skip mechanic. So if I want to run over this acid, for example, I can. Now, I know the DCB also has a low attack range, so be careful about standing, you know, too far back and then trying to attack a Zabak. It might drag you forward. If you made some mistakes, you can take out your blowpipe like this. Find a jug. This one I'm going to use for a solve, but let's say we have an innocent jug here. We can right-click, hit it, get some free HP back. Now, I don't know if I can actually attack behind this boulder, so I'm just going to chill. I'm going to guess no. Yep, I was right. If I wanted to be a little more efficient, I could have put it on long range for a hit. But it doesn't matter. Now, flicking offensives is a lot more effective than flicking defenses because offensive prayers, at least the good ones, like, you know, Rigor, Augury, and Piety, bring a lot more prayer than the defensive prayers. So if you had to pick one, definitely go for the offensives. Now, you could even go out of your way to flick both, but that might be a little bit too much effort for you guys. Now, obviously, that one is out of range no matter what weapon I use, so I'm just going to squeeze in this last attack and get the hell back here. I'll play patient. I'll be patient. You can even not flake during the waves, don't worry about it. 
stacking too many mechanics that you can't personally handle. You saw there, I didn't flick while I was running the waves. It's fine. Now, when Zabak is below, let's say, 300 HP, maybe even 250, I would highly recommend you switch to your blowpipe, especially in a lower invocation run than this. And just kind of blowpiping the remaining bit. I'll do it, let's say, below 200. I, I don't know the exact number, but you can definitely use like a DPS calculator to help you out. If I really wanted to know those numbers. In the end phase, I highly recommend you guys don't flick. It's not very necessary. Especially in the ending. Let's go ahead and use our blowpipe specs. Now, I highly doubt blowpipe's any good at this end bit, but it's definitely better when it's like 10 HP. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Alright. Anyway. Oh, Sol is the Bach with this setup, of course. Expected. Now, the best DPS weapon we're going to have with this setup is going to be Blowpipe. Especially if we hit a BGS, so that's going to be our primary goal. Hopefully we hit a BGS and then we can start Blowpiping. Now, you want to go life second. Get your Ambrosia ready. If you have any one doses like that, maybe try to use them up during P1. So we already have a bandage, so let's go ahead and grab another one. I'm going to want one more adrenaline for sure. And then I recommend one Ambrosia in case you're a little bit newbie and you might need it for P1, which is fine. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat it. And then I recommend Scarab and a Brew. You can do a Restore as well if you have the space, for example, here. But at most, you want to take out one of anything. The reason you want to do that is because you have this button here called Resupply. If your Resupply is not immediately when you hover it, what you want to do is hold Shift on Runelight. Right click the supplies and swap your left click and right clicks accordingly. It's up to you on preference, but make sure withdraw one is a high priority somewhere on one of these two settings, as well as resupply. I personally like resupply on left click, and then I can hold shift to withdraw one. It will withdraw starting from the top left. So if I withdraw, it's going to start with this nectar. So if you want, you can swap the ambrosia like that so that when you withdraw one, it's going to be the ambrosia. And you can put them back in and reorder as necessary, uh, but obviously don't spend too much time doing it. So let's go ahead and watch this timer. Maybe let it take down just a little bit below 30 seconds, and then we'll resalt. We'll summon a thrall, and we'll go for that BGS. Hopefully we hit. If the very first one doesn't hit, don't worry about it. Let's tank to about 75 HP. And we'll just start blowpiping it. Our GPS is going to be pretty bad. It is what it is. And then we're going to start brewing again, just like at Akka. Watch that 30 timer. When it's, you know, just above that 30 timer, let's just start tapping some of our brews. If you want to be more cheap, you could tap the raid brews. You're like an Iron Man. So this is our setup again. Not the greatest DPS, remember. Also, don't have Light Bearer, so my spec's going to regen rather slow. And let's watch that timer. You can't overheal with Bruce, so let's go ahead and do that. You might be wondering why I'm going through my supplies, even though it's a main. And the reason for that is I want to make more space for the raid ones, so then I can do withdrawal one. I should have brewed there, but it's okay. We also don't have ancient haste on, so. I'm not too bothered by taking a little bit of chip damage. Plus, we also have a bunch of free brews, you know? Let's pretend I lost a tick like that. You know, let's not pretend because I actually did. But. Now, Range Thrall is really good because it hits through both, both phases of Warden. No matter what protection prayer Warden has on, you can, in fact, use a Range Thrall. It'll hit through all of them anyway. Alright, this is a Mage Thrall. Uh, Mage Tacks. Augury does help this phase, especially if you don't have Shadow, but I believe it has diminishing returns, which is why you might not see people with, uh, let's say, Shadow use Augury. That being said, I'm pretty sure Blowpipe is better than like a DCP, so I'm going to use that. Even if it's not, I don't care. Not a big deal. You can use these Stace Bus to help you deal with the various attacks. I use that corner one for the, you know, the ones that come at you diagonally, and then I use this one for the windmill attack. For the bombs, you want to stand cardinally. There's the windmill. Let's let it come by so I can let you show. 
once it passes by, you could run on top of the previous spot and then run back and forth. Kind of like that. Get your adrenaline ready for the Dragon Dagger specs. You want to do five total attacks followed, your, followed by your BGS. That's my third, that's my fourth, and that's my fifth. Followed by my BGS. Switch to our range gear. Make sure we have the correct gloves and stuff. Take your time. He has separate animations for his mage attacks and his range attacks like that, and different sounds as well. So keep an eye out for those. Press your resupply compulsively. Try not to use any more specs here. And we have bombs, so we're just going to either run away or send Cardinal, which is north, south, east, west of them. You can send either one or two tiles away, but do not stand on top and do not stand any other directions. And obviously don't stand like three away. We'll use our Abyssal Dagger here. Now, if we have any spec remaining, we definitely want to use it on, B on DDSs. Again, watch that 30 timer carefully. And then we'll get our three down like this. And let's switch over to our range gear. And the order you want to play this raid out, remember, as usual, is right, left, center. This is a non-insanity rate, so this is going to feel like slow motion to me. Impulsively press resupply. And let's get our BGS ready. BGS is also the highest DPS spec that you're going to perform here. Because you're just going to be here, hitting like this, for a billion years. Let's take these off. Now, of course, BGS is going to cost half. And we need to make space, of course. Hit. And you saw I lost a bunch of takes doing that. Completely on purpose. Definitely not me and just brain off. And with a sanity off, you can take your time. Killing these four. The best time to click, in case you're trying to practice for insanity, is going to be right after your tile updates after you click a skull. And we're watching that timer. Rubies are going to carry you through the DPS. You see, I'm clicking after my tile updates like that. Pulsively press resupply. You want you can even order the color of your potions. You can see, we'll go ahead and organize the rest of our switches. We're bored. Habit-wise, you want to always click Warden after every moving command is made. When you're just killing him. It stops you in your place, prevents you from running too far. That's a good tip for Warden. You can see there, I'm clicking really far out, like I'm clicking over here, but as soon as my tile updates, I just click Warden, so I don't run too far out. Of course, watch your salt timer. You don't want your salt to run out, because then when you brew, you're just going to be permanently brewed down to that new stat line. So. When this is right after this ticks to 40, let's say 5, we'll eat our last salt. 
we'll compulsively just withdraw everything left. Impulsively resupply, of course. And then ideally, you should be overhealed to start. But it's not a big deal if you forgot. Put your boots on. They don't have too many negative ranged to worry about, at least. And let us get ready to Adrenaline. Read Thrall, get everything ready. And then I'm going to go for t as many BGSs as we need. And we're going to pray they hit big. As soon as they do, we're going to go back to our normal gear and hit the boss until it dies. You can drain a total of 40 defense, so once you hit that threshold, switch back and start hitting. Now the easiest way to dodge is wait until a shadow is fully grown and then step on it. And if there happens to be free tiles, go and step on those instead. So that shadow's exploded, we'll run on that attack for a little bit. Shadow's exploded, just run on that. That being said, kind of have like a hidden mental track of where these, you know, shadows are ending, where your rock was falling. If anything, it's okay to take a lightning or two. Focus on those boulders, the prayers. Don't worry too much about the lightning we get hit. You know, it is what it is. Ideally, you're not really using your bruise like I am there. I've done this raid a lot, so I am keeping an eye on my, you know, tracker, my brew timer. So I know when it's a good time to brew. But if you're not, if you're not experienced with that stuff, just focus on the Ambrose, like the funny white potion, you'll be fine. When it's low HP, go ahead and just basically move and blow pipe. Try not to lose ticks, focus on your tanking, stuff like that. And you see here, all of these brews I used were basically of my own volition. I didn't technically have to ambro if I just kept moving correctly, and I still have all these restores left. You don't need to bring in as many supplies as I did. Uh, your gear could be better than this, and you can run 500s pretty easily, you know, like this. Not 500s, though. 300s like this pretty easily. And there you go. Don't be afraid of this raid. This raid is easy. It takes practice. It's okay to be bad, as long as you work on improving it. Let's do a little overview of the run of the room times. Now, I think Warden was decent for how bad the gear is. Uh, Zabak, same. Baba is pretty decent. Akka, I think I had pretty bad luck, so I'm gonna guess that could be about 20 seconds faster. Efri, maybe about like 20 seconds faster with this gear. Paths, pretty standard. If you have good mining level, Het should never be above 50 seconds, no matter what kind of raid level it is. Raid level doesn't affect Het, so ideally if you have above 85 mining, Het should always be 45 seconds or below. Gamaras, once you're fast enough, could be about just under a minute. 50 size seconds average would be pretty good. Uh, and we still have, you know, three minutes to spare. So hopefully you have a little bit better gear than this, you should be able to run 300s no problem. If you have a Bofa, you don't really have an excuse for saying this raid is bad, uh, like too difficult for you. You know, you should, if you have a Bofa, you should be doing about 350s comfortably. That being said, Baba, of course, is going to be a huge issue, as is Kefri. But Akka will be a lot easier for you to bypass DPS checks and do damage to Akka, especially at higher invocation levels where blowpipe starts to fall off. You'll have a nice stable weapon for Obelisk in, in case your BGS fails. And most importantly, you're going to save so much time at Warden that you can bring down these raid timers to below 35. Or if you want to keep it at 40, it doesn't matter actually that you're slow at Baba or Kefri now because you're making up all the time at Warden. If you're even lucky when you have something like a Tebow and you're like, oh, I can't go because I don't have Fang. Fang is overrated. Fang is overpowered, but it's also overrated. It's kind of funny, right? You don't need it to push. It just makes two rooms slower by a significant amount, but it's not actually going to DPS check you to the point where you can't complete the raid. Unlike, you know, having, let's say, a Dragon Crossbow and Insanity where you're stuck at last row potentially for a long time. Of course, you can skill check it, but... I think we're going into the little bit more unrealistic territory. That being said, 
even if you do end up having to last row for a really long time, you have four doses of Ambrosia. You should be okay. If you think you're taking a lot of lightning, I highly recommend downloading the Tombs of a Masket, or I think it's TOA, sorry, would be the better, would be the exact way they have it worked. TOA Mistake Track. See how many lightnings you're taking. I took six there, which is, in my opinion, a lot. If you're taking like 15, keep track of the kind of mistakes you're making. You took two orbs. Let's say you took six. I have enough brews to take more, like four more. It's fine. Pet, I got laser, uh, who cares? And I got rolled once. So review your performance per rate and see where you're making the most mistakes. If you want, you can record your videos in your own runs like this. See where there's room for improvement. Monkey room is the easiest from what I've seen. A lot of people struggle to get, you know, below 330 because they're not good at maintaining good blowpipe time and they're like turning on augury. They're trying to get their eight way switches in when it's not necessary, you know, like stuff like that. Review your own mistakes. If we want compared to this raid, this raid is purposely not done extremely well by me, but I want to kind of like tone it down on the sweaty level that you guys kind of have like a basis to improve toward. And then you can start watching some of the other videos or maybe not my runs or maybe let's say Lake's runs or Kirby's runs, No Monkey's runs. There's a bunch of different content creators that you can watch different kind of runs with. I just made a recent video for like Bofa users. That's a good video that's not too sweaty, but a good bit above this one. So yeah, happy rating. I hope you get your fang and your light bears with this video. And I hope, most importantly, it breaks the mental gate that this raid is inaccessible to you. In my opinion, anyone can do 300. Anyone. 